mathematical reasoning is logical reasoning. And here we're referring to logic in its formal sense. One of the strengths of modern economics is that it relies heavily on mathematics to draw conclusions about human behavior. If we don't have at least a basic understanding of formal logic, we can get into a lot of trouble. Let's look at solving a simple equation as an example. We want to solve the equation x plus 2 is equal to the square root of 4 minus x. We've got that square root on the right hand side, so we could start by squaring both sides of the equation. We could subtract 4 and add x to both sides. That gives us x squared plus 5. That gives us x squared plus 5x equal to 0. Well, why not divide through by x? It gives us x plus 5 equals 0. And then we have x is equal to minus 5. It's always a good idea to uh, check our solution. Let's do that. We have x is equal to minus 5. On the, the left-hand side there, we have x plus 2. We substitute in for minus 5, give us minus 3. Substituting in the right-hand side of the equation, we have the square root of 4 minus x. Substituting in for minus 5 gives us plus 3. Clearly, minus 3 is not equal to plus 3. So the left-hand side is not equal to the right-hand side. And x minus 5 is not a solution to the equation. Well, I've made some basic uh, logical errors there. In module two, we'll look. At, in module three, we'll look at proofs and solving equations in lecture two. Uh, but for now, let's get a little bit more familiar with some of the fundamentals of formal logic. The first concept we'll introduce is that of a proposition. Propositions can be true or false and are usually represented by letters. P and Q are favourites. P might be the proposition, all individuals who breathe are alive. That's a true proposition. Q might be the proposition that all individuals who breathe are healthy. Uh, that's a false proposition. Many of the propositions we deal with will be in the form of equations. Logic op operations. Logical operations involve a series of linked propositions. The two links we'll consider are implication arrows and equivalence arrows. Here we have an implications arrow. So we'll read that as P implies Q. If P implies Q, then if P is true, it follows that Q is also true. For example, the proposition X is a square implies the proposition that x is a rectangle. The proposition x is greater than 2 implies the proposition that x squared is greater than 4. The other type of arrow is the equivalence arrow. That's a, a double-headed arrow. In this case, p and q are logically equivalent. If p implies q and q implies p, then we have P is logically equivalent to Q. Thinking about propositions and implications leads us to the concepts of necessary conditions and sufficient conditions. A necessary condition is prerequisite. Suppose P is true only if Q is true, then Q is a necessary condition for P. This relationship is the one that we stated with our implications arrow. P implies Q. We can also state that as P only if Q, or if P, then Q. The only here is, is very important. Notice it's not P if Q. Another way of saying it is uh, Q if P, but that'll become a little bit clearer when we talk about sufficient conditions in the next slide. If at the same time as P implies Q, P implies W, then both Q 
and W are necessary conditions. If we can think of an example here, we have a, the statement that a person is an art is uh, P, the proposition P, and Q is the statement a person is female. Then P implies Q. A person can only be an art if she is female. To be female is a necessary condition to be an art. The converse is not true. It's not necessary to be an art to be female. Can we think of a, another case, so an example of W there? Well, yes. Another necessary condition to be an art is that the person has at least one sibling or is the uh, wife of such a sibling. P is a sufficient condition for Q when statement Q is true if P is true. But Q can also be true when P is not true. If we have P, then we know that we'll always have Q. But Q might also occur when we don't have P. For example, from our last example, the statement that a person is an art is a sufficient condition for the statement that that person is a female. So, a person who is art is, a, is female, but females aren't necessarily all arts. A sufficient condition is contained in the implication P implies Q. In this case, P is a sufficient condition for Q. We saw before P implies Q, if P then Q, and now we can see how Q if P comes about. That's another way of saying that Q is a sufficient condition for P. One more example. If we have P as the statement, one takes a plane to Europe, and Q is the statement, one can travel to Europe, then P is a sufficient condition for Q. But sea travel is also available, so we cannot say Q implies P. We can also have the case where Q can be both a necessary and sufficient condition for P. This is where the equivalence arrow comes in. We can interpret the equivalence arrow now as P if and only if Q. And that's commonly written as I double F. P implies Q, but Q also implies P. So P and Q are logically equivalent. If P is the statement, there are less than 30 days in the month, and Q the statement, the month is February, then P is equivalent to Q. P only if Q, and conversely, Q only if P. Q is a necessary and sufficient condition for P, and vice versa. So saying there are less than 30 days in the month is logically equivalent to saying the month is February. Let's summarize what we've done in this module. The implications arrow is the main tool we're using in this course. So we've got P implies Q. We can interpret that as if P then Q, or P only if Q, or Q if P. And what we need to remember is that means only P only if Q, but Q if P. And there's an important difference between those two. So P is a sufficient condition for Q, and Q is a necessary condition for P. For one more example, let's look at squares and rectangles. So let P be the statement, X is a square, Q is the statement, X is a rectangle. So if X is a square, that's a sufficient condition for it to be a rectangle. A necessary condition for X to be a square is that it's a rectangle. We can also have logical equivalence, and we state that P if and only if Q. So P then is a necessary and sufficient condition for Q, and Q is a necessary and sufficient condition for P. As we'll see later, solving equations involves a sequence of equivalences and implications. In the next module, we'll look briefly at three different types of mathematical proofs. Then in lecture two, we'll consider solving equations.